Okay, today I will show you how you can create a scene like you saw in the preview. We will just delete the light. So we keep our default cube. Yes, buddy, you can stay alive. We set your camera and pull it back 100 meters. Select the cube, go to the modifier tab and choose the ocean modifier. Set the render resolution to something like 25 or higher. Repeat it five times in the X and Y axis. Then rise the camera up by one meter. Go to your render properties, choose cycles and your GPU. Then switch to your shading editor and go to world and choose an HDRI. I downloaded one from Polyheaven and as always I will leave a link in the description and search for texture coordinate and mapping node to rotate the HDRI to a position you like. And we will set up the material for our ocean. We will use the default material, turn down the specularity to something like this and the roughness to something around 0 0.05, the index of refraction to 1.33. That's it for now for our water. Okay, now we will start with our stone structure. I'm lazy, I just downloaded one cliff and one uh, rock model, and I will leave a link in the description so you can follow along. If you want to choose the same models, you can import it if you go to File, Import to Wavefront OBG. So we have this one for the cliffs, and we will do it again for our work. And now we need to set up the material. The material is also in the download folder. And all you have to do is to drag and drop the textures to our shader. We name the work and do the same to organize our project a little bit. Let's create a new collection and put it into it. And if you want to copy the scene, like me, you can just drag and drop a screenshot or a picture of what you want to create directly to the camera. Then you have this option. We can start with our cliffs. And if you don't see the cliff, just increase the clip end of the camera to yeah something higher and do it also for the viewport. Okay, switch to wireframe mode. And now the time consuming process starts. In this case, it's way too big. So just press S, Shift, Z, and press 0 0.5. Go to edit mode, deselect everything, press B, select the middle, enable proportional editing, choose sphere and connect it only, then G, X, and scroll it up until the circle is a bit bigger than our model and then move it to the side you want. Go back to edit mode and increase the height. And make sure you copy it before you do it because we will do it a lot. And again, B, G, X, move it to the side and G, Z again. And then just move it a little bit back. Go switch to your camera again. Make sure you position it, position it right. Yes, and now you have to do this process over and over and over again. Okay, and if you are done, you should have something similar like this. Make sure you select everything except the first one and press Ctrl J to join. And then you need a decimate modifier and choose something around 0 0.25. And with this you saved 1 million vertices and don't have any optical difference. Okay, activate the first one again and you need to cover the front. And now we need to cover these areas and for that we have our work that we have imported before. Move the work in place and scale it down a little bit. Switch to object mode and keep duplicating. The last step is to create these flying island rocks. For this we need our base model 
of this cliff, duplicate it again, press S, Z, and 0.15, rotate it 180 degrees, and move it in place. All rocks and cliffs are in the right position. Now we need some plants, and for this, I also downloaded one tree model and one plant model. Um, I will leave a link in the description. This is a tree, and make sure you enable branches and the leaves. Then press A to select everything. Press Ctrl C to copy it. Go back to your project and press Ctrl V. Disable the leaves and branch collection so you don't see it in your viewport. And now you can select the tree, move it to the position you like. Okay, and now we need some plants or other grass stuff to make it more like a real environment. Just select these four, again copy it and fill your scene with it. Disable our background image. We will create the atmospheric death. And for this you need to go to the view layer, layer properties and enable mist. Go to your shading to your shading tab and switch from combined to mist. Then go to your world properties, open the mist path and set up the values until the close objects are completely black and the objects far away are white or have some grayscale. For this scene, these settings should work pretty good. And now all you need to do is press F12 to render. Okay, this is our render. Then you can close it, switch to this compositing. Uh, enable this checkbox, search for a viewer node, add a math node, set it to multiply and put the mist and the alpha value to this multiply val uh, node. Then we need a color ramp and a mix node. Put the multiply into the color ramp and the color ramp the mix node and also the rendered image output to the other uh, image slot of the mix node. Set it to 0.5, but first select the color with the picking tool of the color ramp and then plug it back to the viewer node. Okay, for me this works fine. This will stay even if you have an animation, so just leave it like this. And now we just need to create planet in the sky. So go back to your camera, enable background image, so you we can create a sphere that, that has the size of this planet. Just go to Add, Mesh, UV Sphere, scale it all the way up, put it to a position like this, press 0 on your numpad, and make sure the sphere is covering the planet of the image. Shade Smooth, Shift D to duplicate, and scale it up a little bit. For the planet, make a new material, choose a a very saturated blue and choose also material for our volume. Delete the principal BSDF, search for a volume scatter, set down the density to something like 0 0.005, go to your compositing, select the color of the color ramp and duplicate the hex code and paste it to the color of your volume scatter. Choose a subdivision surface modifier for the planet and the volume. Okay, but the problem is, you can see, um, this looks not even close to like our reference image. The only thing I found to achieve this is to render two different layers. One layer is our environment with our rock and um, cliff structure and the water with a transparent background. The second layer is the planet with the atmosphere and the sun. For this, we need to disable our background image or set the strength to zero. Add a sun lamp, increase the strength of our sun to 10. Choose a very low saturated uh, yellow or orange color and rotate the sun 
until you can see a little bit of the planet. And under the object properties of the sun, disable glossy. Okay, disable the planet and the volume. Go back to your world settings, type in 1, press F12 to render. But first, don't forget to enable transparency. For that, go to the render property, select film and select this checkbox. Save the image. Then for the second render, turn down the background strength to 0. Disable the plant and tree collection for rendering and also the cliff and rock collection for rendering. Also the water and just enable the atmosphere and the planet. Make sure transparency is still uh, selected and press F12 again. Okay, now you see we need to change our compositing. For this, disconnect these three nodes. Search for glare, choose fog glow, high, turn down to zero and the size to maximum. And then you have a little bit of glow. Then go to your rendering tab, save the image. And now we need this very bright sun right behind the planet. Add a mesh, a UV sphere, create a new material. And the only thing we need to do is to copy the hex code of the sun color and paste it to the emission. Choose 10, switch to EV, enable bloom and increase the intensity. And disable the show overlays in your viewport so you can see this little dot. <laughs> but this is way too small. So increase it to something like this and disable the planet and the atmosphere and press F12 again. Okay, go to your compositing and search for a blur node. Set it to fast Gaussian and relative and to something like 0.4. Switch the glare node to fog low and choose low. Then duplicate it and duplicate it again and duplicate it again. And in the fourth one, choose streaks. Set the rotation to 5, the streaks to also 5. Duplicate this glare node, increase the streaks to 7 and choose an angle offset of 165. Also decrease the fade to something like this, 8.5. Then we need another glare node, set it to ghosts, turn down the color modulation to 0 and search for a mix node, put the output of the third fog glow to the input of the ghost glare node and combine them in the mix node. Choose add and disable the transparency and press F12 again. And now you have this nice looking sun glare whatever effect. Add a new workspace, go to video editing, add our images. Okay, and we need to make a render of our background. So disable everything except the camera and increase the strength of our background light to 1. Press F12. Disable use nodes of the compositing. Save the image and add your images. The first one should be the background, then our stone structures, then our planet. And for the planet, choose lighten as blend mode and decrease the opacity to 0.5. First the background, then the planet and then our stone structures and then our sun. And for that we need add and decrease the opacity to something like 0.5 or 0.6, but that depends on what you like. Uh, also open the uh, color menu and increase the uh, saturation. Yes, and that's it. Just play with the values and any other settings until you're happy. And if you are done, can look like this. Thanks for watching. Bye.